Jamming butterfly, oh I feel the sweetest shot. Oh my, can't mellow high, so high. When I take a bite of your, I'll let you sit over your love. Your love is so good, go to magic, you set me up. This one is honestly very accurate and on point. Unfortunately, I have already encountered people, aka new fans, who either only joined our fandoms to make tattooed hip hop artists their aesthetic, or pretend to love artists, resulting in these individuals being confused about the question What is your favorite song by him, her, them? Oh, you know DPR? What's your favorite B side then? Coming from a former group of friends who religiously listen to K-pop only, it was truly a right to hell telling them I've sorta of lost interest in K-pop but switched to KJH. They kept bashing, not me, but my favorite artists for making crappy music, being tattooed, smoking, and whatever else. Also on social media I've noticed such occurrences a few too many times. Sending death threats to justice for eliminating Changbin, hitting on Jay Park again for stating that not all Korean music is BTS. As a huge fan of Jay Park and Justice, watching this go down felt like stabs in the heart, and I'm assured I wasn't the only one feeling that way. Oftentimes, I notice some K pop fans hit on people like Yuri Boy without even doing their research on him being the songwriter for your probably favorite songs. If you're somehow a pure K-pop stan without much knowledge of the KJH world, please make this point clear to your colleagues. KJH doesn't want to fight about every single thing. And yeah, our artists are allowed to do whatever they want. If they smoke, they smoke. If they drink, they drink. If they are dating, they're dating. And that's where the difference between K-pop and KJH truly showed up for me when I entered new fandoms. Nobody really cares. Not saying KJH fans are innocent angels, because we most definitely are not, no matter how bad I didn't want to be the one breaking it to us. Some of us really do brag with it a little too much sometimes. However, don't stop bragging about it to an appropriate extent, as it definitely is something to be proud of, as well as every fan of every music genre should be proud of their music. To all new or soon to be KJH stands out there, feel welcomed in our fandoms. It may be a rough start, but you'll soon feel appreciated and noticed in here. KJH fan service is chef's kiss. And how done I am with this sometimes. I don't want to go deeper into the most recent TikTok and CK case, but look it up, it's a good example. Being thirsty to some degree is perfectly fine in my opinion, as long as you don't overdo it. Sending them DMs saying how bad you want to fuck them is 100% over any limit. Although they're probably used to it, please imagine yourself receiving such message before clicking send. If you'd feel uncomfortable, please don't do it. People like Jay Park and Minjik may be gods, but they're still human beings as well. Be nice and don't be a cause of their stress. Play on the same wave as these artists. I'm pretty much 50-50 about this one. I haven't watched that many SNTM seasons yet, so I'm for sure not eligible to Yulda Medley judge, but as much as I know, there indeed were plenty of newcomers as well as OGs on SNTM 9. Some participants like An byung Woong were definitely not very well known before joining the season. However, I agree that people like Swings joined, although they're extremely popular. Yet, we don't know the reasons behind it either. I'm fine with everybody taking part for actually showing their talent instead of chasing clout. 
here I'm also 50-50 to be honest. Before any song was released, I feel like his style was still on the same level as hip-hop, mostly at least. Ever since any song, I can only agree with you. I love his songs, don't get me wrong, but they have no doubt become more mainstream. That's not a bad thing in my eyes, that's just a fact or a preference. Especially any song in Summer Hate sounded more like pop music, but I can't deny Summer Hate was one of my favorite songs till November. This time I'm 100% on your side. I've already seen people enjoying songs we've shown them until the moment they realized the lyrics weren't completely clean and the artists were free to smoke, go on livestream whenever, reply to fans, drink and be tattooed. Just because majority of that is either prohibited or just hidden very well in K-pop doesn't mean KJH artists need to stick to those guidelines. Being in the Korean music scene does not equal being a K-pop idol. For instance, let's pretend some KJH artist lights a cigarette in an Instagram story. Don't view the story as the one of a K-pop idol, but as one of a friend or acquaintance. You probably wouldn't try to correct your friends every step, or at least your friend would dump you pretty soon if you didn't let them live their life. Behave the same way towards artists, please. In case you see such responses like, Oh my god, why are you smoking? Is your company allowing you that? And why do you show it off? I bet it could bother them too. By the way, this is a legitimate comment I've seen during a live stream already. In the end, it's not your lungs, it's not your liver, it's not your life. Please respect that. I don't have much to say apart from the fact that I fully agree. I can really imagine him singing an anime intro or do rock music in general. Han, I love you lots, but I really can't agree with this. Prove me wrong if this is incorrect, of course. But personally, I have always heard people talk about AONG more than any other label. I agree with you mentioning people don't really give some artists under AOMG the recognition they deserve. <coughs> Elo. But even as for Elo, I don't think I've seen people not having heard his name at least once. Of course it could be more, but at least Elo has 104,000 fans at the moment, Ugly Duck has 136k, <coughs> That bitch that keeps reposting my stories in which I scoff lot. Only Davida is really underrated with 57k fans. Stand the entire AOMG gang. So now we're at the exact contrast of our previous statement. This one I apparently agree more, yet still not completely. Whenever I mention higher music to people who have minimal knowledge of any Korean music scene, they usually recognize higher music, but just usually don't really know their artists except for J and CK. This situation with AOMG is pretty much the equivalent. People seem to know about AOMG and hopefully even artists like Lehigh, Simon Dominic and Grey, but not really any songs by them. AOMG also seems to look more confusing to newcomers than higher. Y'all should stand AOMG and higher for clear skin. It's even obvious with Lil Boy already, although it's been like a month since SMTM9 ended. Majority of people prayed for him to win and supported him unconditionally during his finals on show, while now that it's over he pretty much lost plenty of so-called fans again. He now might be well known, but I believe an actual fan base will grow as soon as he releases new music, and those few fans that stayed after SMTM or had been there before will most likely share his music more. Golden's voice would without doubt suit the typical AOMG style a lot better, but I could bet he wouldn't switch to AOMG as he is extremely close with his higher dudes. J Park must have seen something in his voice that appeals to higher, otherwise he wouldn't have invited him to join higher. I honestly couldn't be happier he's finally receiving attention. Whether in higher or AOMG, I'll support him forever and ever. Unfortunately, this is a real thing. Even newcomer fans all religiously know the name Justice and what he looks like, yet most of the time haven't even heard a single song by him. I've heard people say, oh my god, he's an SMTM judge? I desperately need to watch SMTM now. Legit just for his visuals. Nobody can deny the fact he's outrageously handsome, but none of that overflows his extreme talent. His discography is so stunning. 
I don't understand how people can even consider putting his music in the background and prefer his visuals. He's more than a pretty guy. I need to admit I'm partially guilty of this. I never hated him, neither did I hate him on SMTM and I've known him beforehand. However, it felt strange to see someone actually that successful on a show for more underrated artists. Or at least that's what the show is supposed to be. Swings really proved himself and his rap skills last year. I really want to hope people see him as the talented rapper he is. Among my KHH friends and closest communities, members were bashing on Swings a whole lot and I literally just jumped onto the bandwagon without a second thought. While actually watching each episode each week, my brain finally clicked and questioned why I'm hating on someone I actually like. He's been an amazing participant on Show Me The Money and he should definitely be seen as such. Swings was a valid part of SMTM9. I agree. This is my opinion and I don't care whether it's unpopular or not. It just needed to be here. I love Kid Millie with all my heart. Please thank him for his existence. By the way, when I said blow up my Kid Millie video, I didn't mean y'all should let it flop. Let's avoid misunderstandings, please. Blow it up, please. No.